Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the fifth Sunday of Easter. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Russell Pollitt. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. And welcome as we come together to celebrate the fifth Sunday of Easter. We are reminded of the great command in today's gospel, that we would love one another as God has loved us. For the times perhaps we notice in the days that are past that we have failed to love, Let's pause now and ask the Lord for mercy and forgiveness. But most of all, let's ask him that our hearts may be expanded so that we can really learn to love as he loves. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. mercy. You were seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, who intercedes for us. Lord. Have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth earth, peace peace to people people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let's pray. Almighty, ever-living God, constantly accomplish the Paschal mystery within us, that those you were pleased to make new in holy baptism may under your protective care bear much fruit and come to the joys of life eternal. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, Paul and Barnabas returned to Lystra and to Iconium and to Antioch strengthening the souls of the disciples, exhorting them to continue in the faith, and saying that through many tribulations we must enter the kingdom of God. And when they had appointed elders for them in every church, with prayer and fasting, they committed them to the Lord in whom they believed. Then they passed through Pisidia and came to Pamphylia. And when they had spoken the word in Perga, they went down to Italia, and from there they sailed to Antioch, where they had been commended to the grace of God for the work which they had fulfilled. And when they arrived, they gathered the church together and declared all that God had done with them and how he had opened a door of faith to the Gentiles. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will bless your name forever my King and my God. I will bless your name forever, my King and my God. The Lord is kind and full of compassion, slow to anger, abounding in mercy. How good is the Lord to all, compassionate to all his creatures. I will bless your name forever, my King and my God. 
All your works shall thank you, O Lord, and all your faithful ones bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your reign and declare your mighty deeds. I will will bless bless your name name forever, my King King and and my God. They shall make known your might to the children of men and the glorious splendor of your reign. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Your rule endures for all generations. I will bless your name forever, my King and my God. A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling of God is with men. He will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself will be with them. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain any more, for the former things have passed away. And he who sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. A new commandment I give you, says the Lord, that you love one another even as I have loved you. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. When Judas had gone out from the upper room, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and in him God is glorified. If God is glorified in him, God will also glory him in himself and glorify him at once. Little children, yet a little while I am with you. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you. By this all will know that you are my disciples, if you have love. For one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Writing about his experience in Auschwitz, Eli Wiesel says that the soldiers tried to get inmates to forget about their relatives and their friends, and to think only of themselves, to tend only to their own needs, or else they would perish. It was a game of survival. And so shut others out was almost the official policy of the Nazis. And this was drummed into them, Wissel says, day and night. Take care of yourself. Don't worry about anybody else. But Wiesel notices that something quite contrary to that happens. He says the inmates soon came to know, he observed, that those who lived only for themselves had less chance of surviving, whilst those who did live thinking about a parent or a child or a brother or a spouse, or a sister, or even an ideal after their time in Auschwitz had a much better chance of getting out alive. It was through 
what they gave to others that somehow allowed them to survive. And he draws the conclusion that selfishness keeps us shut in. It confines us. It erects barriers and walls around us, deep ones between us and others. And it is precisely when we do that, that we begin to perish. He says what frees us from this captivity is an affection and a willingness to reach out to others. Friendship, he says, seeing others as brothers and sisters is what opens the prison, so to speak, of our hearts and sets us free and therefore gives us a future. Another fellow by the name of Brian Keenan spent four years as a hostage in Lebanon. And reflecting on his experience later, he writes, and I quote, It is only when we reach out beyond ourselves to embrace, to understand, and to finally overcome the suffering of another that we become whole in ourselves. We are, he writes, enlarged and enriched as another suffering reveals to us our very selves. And we reach out to touch and embrace. Unquote. You see, love demands the best from us. It somehow brings out the best in us. Being loved gives one a surprising courage and energy and opens up something in us that perhaps nothing else can. The famous American monk Thomas Merton of last century discovers towards the end of his life a love that somehow helps him to experience even God and the world in a different way because his heart is opened in a new way. In the gospel that we've heard this morning, it's almost we could call Jesus' last will and testament because Jesus is telling his disciples the most profound and moving and challenging thing of all that he has ever said. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another even as I have loved you. Jesus appeals to his disciples in those last moments of his life, at the Last Supper, the context of that text, to, above all else, love. Maybe we could say that short verse in John's Gospel sums up the whole of the life of Jesus, to love one another as I have loved you. And this should be the mark, the guiding principle of all Christian life. It's not the distorted version of love that so often dominates our thinking and actions. It's the love of Jesus that we are invited to share in, to live with, and to share outwardly with others. I want to suggest there's two things for us to reflect on this morning. The first one is, what makes this love new. Why does he say a new commandment? You see, in the Old Testament, God is portrayed as vengeful and condemning. God is portrayed in dealing with death. And yet in the New Testament, we see Jesus in action, and Jesus is God in action. And there's not a page in the New Testament where we can read Jesus taking anything away from anybody. At times he gets justifiably angry, but notice he never condemns and he is never vengeful. And Jesus never deals in death. His love may be tough at times if we think, for example, of the rich young man that goes away sad. But an encounter with Jesus, although challenging, was never 
destructive. Somehow, Jesus' love is forgiving and healing and empowering and life-giving. And it is precisely that which makes it new. Sadly, I think that many of us hang on to the Old Testament image of God, a God who is condemning and vengeful, a God who is out to get us, a God who always has standards which we never really seem to be able to attain. And this is saddening and disturbing because many people are wounded in the midst of all life's struggles. And then they encounter a God that is so often transmitted as one who is angry and vengeful and unforgiving. And so how is it that those, for example, who are wounded by divorce or the victims of suicide or LGBTI people who have been rejected by communities and the church or unmarried mothers who have been condemned or victims of rape are able to meet a God of love if we hang on to this condemning and vengeful God. Because then all they experience in the midst of the Christian community is a God of the Old Testament. It is not, for many, a place of forgiveness and healing, empowering and life-giving. And the new that Jesus speaks of is precisely because he knows that real love overcomes any of these struggles and difficulties. The second thing I invite you to notice is the sacrificial nature of the love that Jesus speaks of. We are told that he loves until the end, and the end for Jesus is his death. And we learn this after his death beyond the resurrection. You see, we are called to love until death. In other words, we are called to love beyond where we are now. Death is not simply just a physical dying, but much more. We have to die to overcome, perhaps, our own limited images of God, the barriers that we put up, the confinements and the shut-ins that prevent us from loving to the end. And these can be many things. You know, we can use our status to separate us from others. Our race, our class, our language, our gender, our preconceived and often very ill-informed religious ideologies, our material possessions. The end for Jesus means that none of those things count that there are no limits, no limits to our forgiveness, our acceptance of others, our offering of healing to others, our willingness to empower others, and our willingness to help people to live their lives to the full and rejoice in the fact that they are. Through his death and resurrection, Jesus shows us that the words of Wissel and Kenan are very true. Those who opt to love, to give of themselves in this new way, open themselves up to something in the future. They open themselves up to something greater than themselves and perhaps even to a greater happiness. The new commandment of love is well-being. It is fruitfulness. The new commandment of love heals everyone, those who receive it, but also those who choose to give it. Today, we're invited to perhaps ponder for ourselves what love means to us in the context of our own relationships and most especially in our relationship with God. And perhaps the second part of that reflection is for us to ask what barriers or confinements or shut-ins do I recognize in me that need to die so that I too 
can love like Jesus to the end. So we are still in the Easter season, and we, in place of the creed, are going to renew once again the promises of our own baptisms, and especially for those who were baptized at Easter, a renewal of those promises that they made. And so, dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal Mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. Let us now renew the promises of our baptism, by which we once renounce Satan and his works and promise to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you renounce Satan? I do. And all his works? I do. And all his empty show? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. This is our faith. This is the faith of the Church, and we are proud to profess it through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Let's now bring our prayers before the Lord, asking the Lord most especially that we may learn to love. Let us pray that we may learn to truly love. Jesus appeals to his disciples, above all else, to love. That we would take this invitation seriously and intentionally choose to love as Jesus did. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all who minister in the church, that their daily life and service of others may be faithful and bear witness to the example and command of Christ. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all those who do not know unconditional love, we pray especially for children and those who feel unloved and unaccepted, that they, through followers of Jesus, like us, may come to know and experience love. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For peace. We pray for peace in all those places in our world where there is no peace, in our families, in our country, and all those places across the world where violence and war is a daily reality. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For those who are sick, for all those who suffer in mind, body, and soul, that their confidence in Jesus' love may help them begin the journey of healing. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. In silence, let us bring our own prayers before the Lord. For these we pray, Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord our God, we give you thanks that in the depths of our hearts we can find the love that you have planted there. And we pray that through these prayers you would help us to live from that love so that we too may love to the end as to Jesus Christ, your Son, in whom we make to you all these prayers. Amen. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, fruit of the earth, work of our human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of his water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our human nature. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, work of our human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord, we ask you to receive us and please sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Wash away our iniquities. Cleanse us from all our sin. Let's pray, sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Creator. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all God's holy church. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to lord you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the older order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup. And once more giving thanks, he gave the cup to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the offering of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, 
advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis our Pope, Buti our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family you have called before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. It was the Lord Jesus who taught us to call God our Father, and so we pray. Our oh, Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom the and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, to set your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer those around us the sign of God's peace. If you're alone, simply just pray for peace at this time. And we pray together. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. How blessed are we who are called to share in the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only to say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Body and blood of Christ, bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defines spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, when you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here.
Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's go now in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.